Williams once a great team in the Mansell days. Now it's time to return it to its former glory. What's going on guys? Brown here and welcome to the start of a new series on my channel. Obviously on the new F1 game that come, came out this week at the time of recording. Um, I'm going to do a Williams ad, Road to Glory. I had this idea for a, a, a little while, so I thought, why not better do it? I'm going to be doing a, my team as well alongside this, but as you can see in the background, we're doing some upgrades on the car because it's very draggy, the Williams. I think we all know that. Hey, I'm Chris, your primary advisor for all things R&D related. It's a pleasure to meet you. You'll find your workstation is all set up with everything you need to track the progress of your car. But if you have any other questions, don't hesitate to ask. So, the car has been sacked. Um, you would have seen in the background me sitting, setting in everything up. I, um, chance of rain, not really, is it? It's the desert. Um, but one thing I haven't showed you is the, cal the calendar. Hello folks and welcome to Paddock Pass, your pre-race edition for this, the inaugural round of the 2021 Formula One World Championship. And I've got to say, it feels great to be back. As is tradition, there is something of an air of a first day back at school on arrival here. But it's more than that. It's a breath of fresh air. It's an element of normality in what has at times felt to be something of an abnormal world. Now, we were supposed to have a raft of new regulations this season, but as we know, they've been held back which does give all of these teams the opportunity to have a second bite at the cherry, one final chance to show what they can do in this era of Formula One. But the responsibility for results, as always, falls on the drivers. But with the cars at their disposal this year being very similar to the cars they had at their disposal last year, succeed, and they, of course, will put it all on themselves as a display of their innate skills. And abilities but the knife cuts both ways because if they fail to succeed there's absolutely nowhere for them to hide the other question though remains as to which of these teams has been able to do the incredible the impossible perhaps with these regulations and pull something out of the hat over the winter that gives them the march on their rivals as always we can't wait for this season to begin but for now from us that's your life so if you go into join through your metro to like and subscribe if you want to as well. Um but in our first laps in the Williams first in anger into into qualifying our first lap is um, obviously we're not expecting too much as when we were doing our second run we were finding time, I'm not sure who it was, was trying to overtake us whilst we were doing our qualifying lap. Um, but we did improve you can see how much we are up by and I think with this career it's going to take a while you may have seen the settings that I put the um, the R&D points for the AI increased just so it makes it a bit harder for me um, and when we've, we've, we're already playing catch up but we'll be playing it even more with them so let's get into the race Months of rumour and speculation all come to an end today as we return to racing for the opening event of what promises to be an enthralling season. Welcome along then to round one of this year's Formula One World Championship. We go racing today around 3.36 miles of the magnificent Bahrain International Circuit with 15 corners and two good passing opportunities into turns one and four. Keep an eye out for drivers locking the front left tyre into the tricky braking zone of Turn 10. So here we are in 2021 at the start of another Formula One World Championship. It all begins here, Mercedes looking to retain their hold on the title, Red Bull seeking to secure their position as the main contender for that title, Ferrari no doubt hoping for a fresh start following their difficulties last year, and elsewhere on the grid, the prospect of some really exciting battles, including between the newly rebranded Aston Martin and Alpine teams. 
Lots to discuss then with Anthony Davidson, who's joined me in the commentary box for today's event. It's good to be back, Crofty. Let's hope for some good racing today. We can't know at this point how competitive these teams are relative to each other, but hopefully nobody is able to run and hide. We want to see these drivers pushing to the limit all the way to the chequered flag. With the race minutes away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position, and it's Valtteri Bottas that completes the front row. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Verstappen, Ricardo, Sergio Perez, and Norris, Stroll, Sainz, Vettel, and Charles Leclerc, Sonoda, Fernando Alonso, Esteban Ocon, and Raikkonen, Giovinazzi, Russell, Mick Schumacher, and Brown. Mazepin and Pierre Gasly picks up the final grid slot today. And with preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. So it's pretty easy one stop as there's three, there's four, there's five lights. It's lights out and away we go for round one in this RTG Grimmel. It's a great start there by the Ferrari. It's then side by two by two at the start as Lewis Hamilton looks over to the lead. Bottas has got Max Verstappen to deal with. We've got a good start. We're going side by side. We've been forced off by Fernando Alonso and we're onto the grass. We've gone on the other side of the track and we've clipped the gravel. And now that hard work, the absolute dive bomb into turn one has all come undone thanks to the Spaniard. But now, Look in front of us, the two Alfa Romeos going at it side by side. Can we catch them napping? The side by side, can we back out of it? We're going to send it down the inside of the Iceman. We've caught him napping and we are up into P15. So we've gained three positions at the start. It looked like it could be more. Up next is Antonio Giovinazzi. Have we got the pace? to catch him, the Williams on the R&D is the slowest car, but here comes Kimi Raikkonen, can he do anything down our inside, it looks like he may have got us, no, we managed to hold, off, hold him off for now, but I think that's just wave one of Kimi Raikkonen in this Grand Prix. As you can see up front, I'm loving the fact they've added the lap counter. It makes my life so much easier when editing this video and um, these videos. But here comes Kimi Raikkonen. Yeah, side by side. This time he's got it my inside. So the only thing we're going to have to do is hold it right round the outside. And that's exactly what we are going to do with Kimi Raikkonen. But we just about get it. It looked like that we backed down a little bit there. But we are still side by side with Kimi Raikkonen and we keep ahead of Kimi Raikkonen. How? I do not know. But one lap later, here comes wave three from Kimi Raikkonen. Pulls to the outside and this time has he got the job done. We're going to force him the long way round and he's had to back out of it. But here comes Mick Schumacher just like it was in the early 2000s between Kimi Raikkonen and a Schumacher. This time it's Schumacher's son. And down the inside goes Mick Schumacher. Kimi Raikkonen holds on. He's gone from attacking to defending. But that has, he hasn't really got it either. But Kimi Raikkonen now setting his sights on us. Put Gasly down at the back as well after that penalty on the opening race of the season but Kimi's getting closer and closer into the final corner we go now can he get the job done on us this is wave four he's gonna go to the inside and he's got us so much more quicker down the straight and we're gonna tuck back into his slipstream can we go down the inside no he's got us covered off I may have been a bit more aggressive if that was last year, but with the new damage model, you've got to be very, very, very careful. So I did back out of that one. But now, can, the main thing is can we stick with Kimi Raikkonen? It's flag. now the yellow flags, it's a safety car, but what's happened here, Valtteri Bottas? What are you doing? Okay. He just parked it in the middle of the track. 
Foundry Butter. The pressure is sure getting to an, uh, Mercedes. It's only round one. What is he doing? Oh, and the side by side with the two. No, don't tell me they've hit each other. No, they haven't. Bottas has just been scared off the track. Lewis Hamilton <laughs> wasn't giving up. Bottas tried to go around the outside, and it was Bottas that blinked first. Did he lock up? I think he actually locked that left front while trying to hold it around the outside, but still, what's he doing there? Right on the racing line. Very dangerous. He has completely lost his marbles. But this is it. See, there was Hamilton was nowhere near him. He just locked up and went straight on. And then parked it. But this safety car has allowed those doing the two-stop to get a free pit stop here. Slight delay for Charles Leclerc. And this means that those doing the one-stop have, in fact, it hasn't really worked as well as strategy. But on his return to Formula 1, Fernando Alonso is leading the Bahrain Grand Prix and his teammate Esteban Ocon is only third with Yuki Tsunoda in the middle of them and we are P6. If the race was to end now, what a result it would be as we're literally side by side with Kimi Raikkonen. We're having none of it. We're going to slipstream Kimi Raikkonen. Look at the speed. We're so close. We can always touch touch it. We're going to send it down the inside. Kimi Raikkonen has come across. And there may have been contact there with Esteban Ocon. Yes, yellow flags around the outside. We've got Giovinazzi as well. We're up into P4. We've got past both the Alfa Romeos. And now can we? Could we potentially... Attack the Alpine of Esteban Ocon. Maybe in a couple of races, maybe in a couple of seasons. But as you can see here, it's bolted. But we have got away from those behind. Max Verstappen has also fought his way back through into the first corner. The yellow flags. That's because Yuki Tsunoda is spun. What's he done? He was second. Yuki Tsunoda on his F1 debut, sitting pretty in second, and he spun. What's happened there? And that means that we are currently in the podium position. That's it. End the race now. We don't need to do the remaining 19 laps. But what's happened to Yuki Tsunoda? Oh no, Yuki. He just lit up the rear tyres. I mean, it's his first race, so it is a rookie, rookie error, but the pressure looks to have got to him. And he's just lit up the rear tyres, and Max Verstappen, all over the back of us now. This, this is the same lap. Max Verstappen, no, sends it down our inside, and our run on the podium lasted about half a lap. And behind, behind us now, it's Daniel Ricciardo. Who I think now is in a net P2. Once everyone, once we and everyone else in front of us, Fernando Alonso and Ocon pits, and there goes the McLaren. There's no point even commentating on it because it, it was always going to happen, weren't it? But now them two passed us, we're down into P5 and P4. No P5, I was right. And now heading up towards turn four. And we're following Daniel Ricciardo into turn one. Oh, the smoke! The smoke in Max Verstappen! The Honda engine's blown! On the opening race, Max Verstappen is out of the Bahrain Grand Prix when he looked like he was actually on for a win. The Honda engine is given way. When they're meant to be backing out at the end of 2021, they put everything they had into this season, and it's clearly not worked because the engine's blown. Here comes Lewis Hamilton now, past those behind me, trying to get his way back through the field. And this then means that Daniel Ricciardo, on his McLaren debut, is in the net, net lead of this Bahrain Grand Prix. As now here comes Lewis Hamilton, the kid, 
the Alfa Romeo's fighting back of Antonio Giovinazzi. Behind him though is Lance Stroll. Is Lance Stroll coming to follow him through? He's in his DRS. Down the inside goes Lance Stroll. Does he get the job done? Yes he does. But, but Giovinazzi is not giving up. Around the outside he goes. That switch is now to the inside. But Lance Stroll has got the grip and the bravery to hang it around the outside as we are now all over <laughs> as Hamilton now catches us this hopefully one day this will be for position but that's a long long way away as Lewis Hamilton round our outside did he really have to do me like that I'm a Hamilton fan did he really have to do me like that really really Lewis why but now he's gone but here comes Lance Stroll he's all over the back of us you can see him there he's pulled out and he's breezed past us there's no point but Lance Stroll has picked up a great slipstream because he sent it around the outside of Lewis Hamilton and he's got Lewis Hamilton here and whilst these two are scrapping we've caught Hamilton napping and a roll over the back of him with tucks it nicely into Stroll's slipstream and we're going to send it back round the outside if you're going to do me round the outside Lewis I'll do it to you as we're back past Lewis Hamilton we've overtaken a Mercedes we can say that that hasn't happened for Williams in a long long time but he's going to just go straight back past us here he is not even um, two corners later and he's back past us it was nice while it lasted it was always going to happen though and now on to lap 13 we're coming to the pits to make our one and only stop onto the hard tyres I had I recorded this race before but the footage just it wouldn't it just wouldn't work so this is the redo of it um, and in that go, race go it was as chaotic as this one but Jeff put me onto the wrong strategy in that one put me onto the soft tyres and I had to go to the end of them otherwise I would have lost time and with two laps to go I had two punches both on the left side at the final corner and it was just I couldn't dig myself out the out the gravel but that's the past, this is the present, that was a totally different um, recording, I restarted it of course, there goes Pierre Gasly past us and in a lap's time Yuki Sonoda will follow him through, Yuki try and after that mistake he is kind of, he's following his teammate of course Gasly had that penalty I think it may have been Gasly behind us then when we were doing our quali lap but there, like I've mentioned, past goes Yuki Sonoda this Williams is an absolute boat it's, it's in the middle of the sea and we need to find some land to catch up but I was more looking here at the battle our race was just we were on our own but the battle at front is those those on the two stop tra st strategy make their final stops but what I was looking at here like I mentioned earlier Daniel Ricciardo is in the net lead and now after everyone stops he is in the lead but he's got a seven time world champion Lewis Hamilton hunting him down can Daniel Ricciardo, yes there's still 10 laps to go, can he get, can he get his, first, his F1 debut win for McLaren, and his, what would be his first win since that 2018 Monaco Grand Prix, when he had that engine issue in the Red Bull, can he do it? Lewis Hamilton, he's still got to get past Fernando Alonso, um, but can he do it? 
as Lando Norris now is battling Estevan Ocon, Lance Stroll's up the road. The Estevan Ocon doing the one stop, the same as Fernando Alonso and breezes past does Lando Norris. And now Sergio Perez is going to follow him through. There's a Ferrari battle in the background as well of Sebastian Vettel and Carlos Sainz. And Perez is also past Esteban Ocon. And now can he challenge the McLaren of Lando Norris? The answer is yes, he can. Down the inside goes Checo Perez. Go on Lando, hold around the outside. And he does. But Perez isn't done yet. Heading down towards turn four. Has he got enough in the tank to send it back down the inside? No, he hasn't. Perez holds on for now. Lando holds on for now. But look at this. Five laps to go. Look at the gap between the two of them. 2.7 seconds. You can see them in the same camera shot. Can Lewis Hamilton steal a win? Or can Daniel Ricciardo hold on to get McLaren's first win since Brazil 2012? But whilst we were watching that, and I was mostly watching that because I was on my own, Giovinazzi is coming round our outside. It's the repeat of the Euro final. It's England v Italy and this time I'm not going to let England le lose everything's on my shoulders now Antonio Giovinazzi the Italian is all over the back of us and I'm going to do everything I can to keep him behind I thought at one point in this race for those in the two stop that we might be able to nick a point but on this hard tyre we just had no pace whatsoever. Nothing was there. It was awful. But here comes Antonio Giovinazzi. He's got the run on us now. Down into turn one. Flick of the steering wheel. To our inside. And Giovinazzi's through. But we, like I just said, we're not done there. Because we're going to try and cut him back up the inside. Giovinazzi defends it. But now we're going to have a run up towards turn four. Can we do it? We're going to wait for it. Send it straight down the inside. But Juvenaz is going to cut us back. And what a camera angle this is. We're side by side through the tyre S section. Down the hill. We force him wide and off the track. Juvenaz didn't make that easy. He wanted the position. We hold on for now. Well, what a battle that was. And we hold on to a P13. But up front, this is it. Lap 28 of 29. Lewis Hamilton is right on the back of Daniel Ricciardo. Come on, Danny Rick. I'm a Hamilton fan, but, you know, we would like to see, for the sake of his career, see something different. But on to the final lap. Can Lewis Hamilton do it? Or can Daniel Ricciardo hold on on the final lap? Lewis Hamilton goes round the outside of Daniel Ricciardo. Ricciardo tries to force him wide. But Lewis Hamilton has the bravery to send it round the outside. And on the final lap of this Bahrain Grand Prix. Goes into the lead. Daniel Ricciardo was so, so, so close to get in his maiden win for McLaren on his debut as well and we've hit the polystyrene board we've gone off the track because I was watching the the driver tracker and now Giovinazzi to our inside we're gonna hold him right round the outside and we stay ahead of the Italian Can Giovinazzi have one more go at us? Will we defend it? I think he may just be a bit too far back. But let's wait and see. As now cutting on. Lewis Hamilton rounds the final corner. He will win in Bahrain. Boy did he have to work for that. Lewis Hamilton, Sir Lewis Hamilton wins from Daniel Ricciardo. And Lando Norris has got past Lance Stroll and he's going to finish 
third is a McLaren double podium. It's just like he did in 2020. Sergio Perez just didn't have it today. Fernando Alonso, great one sort of strategy. Sebastian Vettel, great one, um, Lance Stroll, great one stop. Same for Sebastian Vettel. Carlos Sainz, it's not a great day for Ferrari. Pierre Gasly picks up the final point. It was a decent recovery by Yuki Tsunoda to finish P13, finish P12. And we are going to round the final corner. We held off Giovinazzi. We held off Italy. We are going to finish P13 on our debut. Then comes the Alfa Romeo, Mick Schumacher and George Russell. And then Kimi Raikkonen who pitted for damage. And Mazepin, of course, finishes last. Now though, back into the paddock, you can see our claims gone up. And wow, what a race that was. If you enjoyed that, make sure to like and subscribe. We've got some more upgrades. I'm focusing heavily onto the aero side, you can see there. And also the durability as well, just in case, because that's a big thing. I really liked the new R&D system as well because it was very confusing and I never really knew what I was doing to be honest I just used to look I was like the chassis needs doing clicked on the 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 next one that we had I didn't actually look at what it was called or anything but now this is much much easier we are going to do something on the um an upgrade on the durability but if you have enjoyed this video make sure to like and subscribe my team will be out soon. Goodbye.